So today we're going to jump ahead to chapter 12 and start talking about some different types of graphs. If you want to follow along in your textbook, I'm starting on page 863, but you could certainly just watch the video without it. Today we're going to talk about line plots, not line graphs, that's something different, but line plots. So let's look at the example that they give us here. First of all, they ask about a frequency table. Frequency tables use tally marks to count up how many of each item you have. So here's a list of data. They've arranged it in this box for us. And I'm just going to make a tally mark for each one in the box. Remember that it's one, two, three, four slash so that you can easily count by fives. So I see one zero, a two, a one, a three. I completed the first row. Sometimes kids like to cross them off as they go through and do it. Just don't annihilate them so you can see your data later. We have two ones another three and a four. Uh, we've got a two, a one, a zero, and a one. And then our last row, two, three, two, one. So the frequency table tells me the frequency that each thing happens. We had a zero happen twice. We had a one happen six times. The two happened four, three happened three, and four happened only once. So next we're going to go and put this into our line plot. Now a line plot uses X's. Sometimes you'll see them done with dots. We actually saw an example of that the other day when we were talking about mean and median and mode. That's called a dot plot. They're made exactly the same way and contain exactly the same type of information. One of the things that I want to draw your attention to is to keep your X's or your dots lined up and the same size. And here's an example of what not to do. You can see that this middle one has only has three, but it appears to have the most because the, not, the X's are stretched out. This one appears to have the same as the uh, one on the end because the single X is so big. So it's important that your X's are all about the same size and that your spacing is all about the same. If I was to compare the two here, you can see that this end one has more than the one here because it has a higher list. Now we have small numbers here, so it's not a big deal, but if you had much more in each of your bars, you wouldn't want to have to count every single one. Part of the beauty of this is that you can do it visually. All right, that's what not to do. So they've gone through and they've taken the tally marks out of the frequency table and they've made some X's for us already. Notice that this is a number line. Everything is evenly spaced. We count by the same thing each time. All right, so now we need to make six X's about the same size on top of the number one. We need to make four on top of the number two, three on top of the number three, and just one X on top of number four. So when you take a chart that started like this and kind of you know had great information, but it was kind of scrambled, we've now put it into something that is very, very easy to see, okay? I may not worry about exactly how many X's are on my line, but I know that one has the most and four has the least. Okay, turning the page. They give you a definition up at the top, comparing line plot and dot plot. Dots usually have dots. Line plots usually have X's. I don't know why they call it a line plot when they use X's. I guess because they're made out of lines. I don't know. Okay, so I'm actually going to skip making this. This information went onto this dot plot, okay? One of the things I want to talk about is to describe the presented data. Right? They talk about here, make a line plot, then describe the data. How could you describe this? Well, the mode would be two because it has the highest bar. It has the most frequently occurring number of pets. You could say that the minimum was zero. The maximum was four. The range was also four because if the highest and the lowest get subtracted, you're still going to have four. Uh, you could say things like the median, if you were going to move your fingers in to find the middle number. It's not always the middle number here. It's the middle number if all of your X's were written out on a list. And then, of course, you could add all of these up and divide if for some reason you needed to find the mean off of this. Okay. All right. Take a moment. I would like for you to do, if you've got your book in front of you, I would like for you to do this. Now, if you don't have your book, grab a piece of scrap paper real quick. You can just make yourself a number line and start putting your X's on top. I suppose if you wanted to do dots, you could since they're the same thing. 
I'm going to go through and do this. If you do it on your own, you can pause and then just skip ahead. One of the things that I like to do when I'm all done is to count the number of things on my list and count the number of X's or dots that I've made, just to make sure that I haven't missed any. One, two, three, four, five, there's three rows. So there's 15 numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I've gotten them all. Now, if you had to describe the data as is asked for here, you could say the mode is at two. The highest is five, the lowest is zero, the range is five, and if I actually worked it out, the median would be right here at two, which if you notice is not the middle number, but when I check out all the X's, that's where the middle number would fall. One of the other things we can talk about is outliers. This vocab word popped up the other day, and it means a statistic that is very, very different than the rest. These are very easy to find when you do a line plot or a dot plot. You can see that 75 just is kind of hanging out there. It lies out there, outlier, away from the rest of them. It's so very, very different. This would be considered the outlier. Now, you can only have one outlier within a group. You can't have one and then have something here or have a high one and a low one. Technically, you're only supposed to have one outlier. If we jump to the bottom real quick and look at this example, I would say that there is no outlier, even though there's a little bit of a gap, a little space in between, they're not that much different, okay? 17 is our lowest, but it's hanging right in there with 18. It's not like we had 17 and then nothing happens again until we get to 25. These are all roughly in the same area, all right? I don't think any of them are that much different. Now, if we added like a two or a 67, I would consider those to be outliers because they're very, very far away from the rest.